Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Oh, I'm a little nervous, y'all. Man, I just want to thank God for the opportunity. I want to thank Pastor Jay and Mama Jones for allowing me to um, to speak. This was not what I was going to say, but Juicy came up here, and I'm, I'm still going to preach my word. But I just want to just tell y'all what, you know, Juicy is the reason. Hey, hi, Mama. Hi. Juicy is the, hey, Ju hey, Juicy called me, y'all. I came to visit the church one time, and I left. And before I left, she got my phone number. And she just continued to call me and call me. And you know, when you're in your sin, and you know, the devil had, he thought he had you. You know, when he, and, and she would call me, and it seemed like she would call me at the very moment that I was in the middle of some sin, and I wanted to stay in it. And I'd be like, you know. <laughs> And she pulled me right out of it, you know, and I would go, and I would try to get off the phone with her. And she was like, I just wanted to call and check on you, let you know the Lord loves you. And, um, you know, just see when you come back out to church. And I would be like, you know, I tell her something and I get off the phone. But I couldn't get back into where I was. You know, I couldn't have fun. And I would be like, this girl keep calling me in the middle of everything. But I'm thankful, Juicy. Thank you. 
Yeah. You know, he didn't make them. Yeah. They chose That's them. Right. That's what I want to point out. That he didn't make them. That they chose to be children of obedience. Come on, that's right. Okay, we're going to go back to 23. Uh, Joshua, we're still in Joshua. And we're going to go to verse 6. And it says, be ye therefore very courageous. How many people know you have to be courageous? Yeah. Juicy has to be in she had to have courage. Yeah. She went the blunt, y'all. I don't think she told y'all. <laughs> she, she went the blunt. She went to blunt high school. Come on. <laughs> they were nice. You know, when she said that they tripped her up. And I'm probably sure they said way more things. But she had to be courageous. Yes, right. That's why he's telling them, be ye not among, I'm sorry, I, I went down in verse 6. Be ye, therefore very, be ye therefore very courageous to keep all and to do all that is written in the book of the laws of Moses. Well, at that time, that's all they had. But we got the whole Bible. Come on. That ye turn not aside, therefore, to the right or to the left. She had to keep walking. Amen. You have to keep walking. Amen. You have to keep. You you have to keep going. Yes, you, no matter who stops serving. You know, if you get saved with your sister, yes. and then your sister stops serving, yes. you got to be courageous. Yes. You got your sister might get taken. Away, you know, she might get taken away by the world, yes. but you got to stay on your path yes. so that when she decides to come back. You there to help her. You got to be an encouragement to her. An encouragement to her. Amen. Verse 7. Um, that ye may therefore, that ye may come not among the nations that are among, that the nations, these that are, that remain among you. Well, in this time, you know, Joshua, they had other nations. They drove out the Canaanites and all of them didn't drive out. But at this point, we don't have other nations. You got friends. You got family members and you know your mama got sisters who might not be in church they got children and they get to do this and they get to do that yes. these are your other nations yes. that are among you yes. these are the nations that you should be a witness to mm -hmm. don't go over their house and when you know we all get together and you go over there and they showing you and enticing you with all the stuff that they can do Help us go. you supposed to go over there and you supposed to tell them that's nice but you know you're not supposed to be mean. But you know you yeah. you, you encourage them. You tell them what you can do. Yeah, that's right. Because you can do stuff too. Yeah, amen. That's right. Come on. It says make no mid let. It says it says neither make mention of the name of their God, uh -huh. nor cause them to swear by them. Neither serve them, nor to bow yourselves down unto them. Don't bow yourself down unto them. You do you do that by saying by I'm gonna use an example. My my children had went somewhere, and um, you know we we went and they were saying you know we we were telling them about they like a singer called Jamie Grace, and then we were telling our cut you know we were telling this person we were telling her about Jamie Grace and she said she don't like those songs. She showed us her songs though. And my baby said, well, mama, you said we couldn't listen to that kind of gospel. It wasn't gospel. Come on, baby. You know, y'all, you know, you can listen to it, but, you know, don't, you know, you, you supposed to, you, you got to, you know, they children, you know, they're trying to walk that line of, of how to be a witness. Yeah. But at the same time, I want to point out that these are the things that they tell you, make no mention of. Don't bow down to this stuff. Don't let them tell you that that ain't right, this right. You know what you've been told. That's right. Don't let it, don't, don't let them take that from you. He right. said, verse 8, but to cleave unto the Lord your God as ye have done unto this day. No. Don't let nobody change your walk. Yeah. Don't let nobody take your parenting. Um, what your parents have put in you, what they trained you to do. That's right. Now, we're going to jump over and I'm going to finish here. It's in Judges chapter 2. We're going to talk on the other hand about what disobedient. How children, uh, are you going to be obedient or disobedient? We're going to talk about the disobedience and what it gets you. Oh. So, um, Judges chapter 2, verse 2. And ye shall make no league with them in the inhabitants of this land, and ye shall throw down their altars, but ye have not obeyed my voice. Why have you done this? Why? He said three. Wherefore I wherefore I also said I will drive them out from, a, from drive them out from before you. Now he's not. 
He said, but they shall be as thorns in your side, and their gods shall be snares unto you. Now, you done went over there and started popping your fingers and listening to that song. And now you back at home, and you want to pop your fingers and listen to this song. Now you hiding in the room, listening to these songs that you ain't got no business listening to. Now you trying, you struggling in your walk. This is a thorn in your side. You got to do what you've been called to do. You got to stay on the path that you've been called. Y'all not oppressed. Y'all blessed. Y'all not oppressed. Y'all blessed. Hey, I don't have a testimonial coming up at 10. Come on. But you can. Because you've been growing up in holiness all your life. Yes. You're not oppressed. Come on. Don't go over there and let people tell you what what you can't do. What you oh you can't do that? Come on now. You can't do that? Come on. Ooh. They make you sound like you're oppressed. And now you're looking at your parents. And I'm, I'm gonna give this quick testimony yeah. about my daughter. Come on. Yes. Uh, she asked me, she came to me, and she said, Mama, um, I wanna be on the uh, softball team. And I was like, oh. You know, you try not to shut them down so fast. Right. You know, you try to think about it. Try yeah. to walk with them through yeah. the pain. Yeah. You know, because you understand. I understand. Yeah. But I only got 18 summers or whatever they do. I only got 18 summers to make sure she's safe. Come on. Lord, I, I, want it. I want more than that. But I, I'm yeah. just telling you. And, 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 you know, in today's time, I only got about 18 summers. Or spring or whenever they do it. So I just don't want to share my time with that. And I, I'm not saying nothing wrong with that. I'm telling you like Joshua said, ask for me and my house. And so um, she asked me, can she be on softball? Come on. And when you've been conditioning them and when you've been training them, you don't have to start at day one. I don't have to go back and tell her who David was so I can tell her who his son was. And then I can tell her who had David and how he even get up to David, who Abraham is. I was able to, the Lord dropped it on me and I was able to give it right back to him. Yes. And I said, baby, do you remember Solomon? And she said, yes, ma'am. I said, do, do you remember why God told him don't have too many wives? Come on. And he, she said, yes, ma'am. Well, she said, some along the lines of they would make him, they would, Make him serve their God. That's right, come on. And I said, when you get on that team, y'all will start to be like family. Yeah. Y'all will be going this way on, and going that way and going this way together and going that way together. And and then you you know Sarah will start to tell you what she able to do at home. Yeah. And then Sue tell you what she able to do. Y'all yeah. do that. Yeah. Girl, I'm big letting us do that. Yeah. We've been doing that all this time and that time. Then they start to be thorns in your side. Amen. Come on, come they start on. to be the thorns. You, you begin to go home and feel like your parents are oppressors. Yes. You know, they oppress, they slave driving me. And we ain't doing nothing but trying to keep you blessed. Come on. <laughs> you know? And so I was able to tell her this. And she told me, and I was, I, I love that she was truthful with me. She said, I don't like it, mama, but I understand it. Wow. She said, I still want to do it, but I understand. Come on now. She understood. Yeah. She understood exactly what I meant. Yeah. She understood exactly what, and I felt good about my nose. Yeah. You know, I felt good because my daughter understood that I wasn't slave driving yeah. her. Yeah. You know, I wasn't oppressing her. Yeah. That, you know, that, that she was still growing up and she still get to do things. And she can't look at what she can't do. Yes. Right. Focus too much on what you can't do. Yes. Focus on what you can do. That's right. And this is, I'm going to close at this one. Um, now, this is just what I wanted to reference to Ezekiel 18 and 4. He said, All souls are mine. God said, All souls are mine. The son, so is the son of the, the soul of the father and the son. You know, and I just wanted to make sure that, you know, I said that. Because all souls are his. I got to make sure that I make sure that she makes sure that her soul is right. Yes. That her soul, he said, and the soul that's sin, it, it shall die. It shall die. Yes. I need her to understand more that she shall, you know, that if she don't, if she don't get right with God and do all the things that are written in this book of the law, mm -hmm. that she won't be able to make it in. And this is the, um, my last verse. Um, it's still in Judges 2. And it is 10 and 11. And it says, And also all the generations were gathered unto their fathers. And there rose up another generation. 
after them which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which he had done and uh, had done for Israel. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served Balaam. So these this, this is what I wanted to leave you with. This is why I put a subtitle of regeneration or degeneration. Because if you don't regenerate the next generation, you know, how many generations are we from these powerful men and women of God right here? You know, how many generations are we away to say, oh, they don't even know nothing about the Lord? What? You know who they grow on the wall? You know, no, I'm not speaking at all. I'm just showing the example of if you don't regenerate the next generation, you will be in that situation. I know everybody in here know people who you can say, oh, she grew up in church. And, and um, I wonder why she's serving the Lord. Her mama don't serve the Lord. Are you regenerating the next generation? Are you regenerating the next generation? Are you thinking about the next generation? You, we, I just want to make sure that that was more geared towards the older ones that are getting ready to get married. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, make sure that you are regenerating the next generation. You know, those no's go a long way. That's right. They go a long way. Yes. Don't, don't get up and say, oh, I'm going to make sure my children get to do this. They get to do that because my mom and them didn't let me. Jesus. Make sure you let it. Yeah, Make yeah. sure you led. Make sure you are led because your mom and them raised you and you turned out to serve the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, is the next generation going to serve? Come on. Yeah. That's all I have. Amen. Praise the, Praise the Lord. Are you regenerating the next generation? <laughs> we'll try that again. <laughs> Amen. Help us, God. But um, I thank God for Sister Martha. She was uh, talking about um, being the children of obedience versus being the children of disobedience. Mm -hmm. And so we want to be the children of obedience. And she also was saying that, you know, even with children, you have to train them and also be an example. And she also mentioned that um, God gave them a choice. You know, God is not going to force it on you. He gives yeah. you a choice whether you want to serve him or not. Yeah. And no matter who stops serving him, you know, she wanted us to just continue to serve God. And so I just thank God for her. And I just want to stop and say, I just thank the Lord for my pastor and my and our elite lady Jones. We appreciate you. We appreciate you for even allowing us to have this service. And they're a family of 12. And if you don't know nobody that loves children, you know, they have patience. They have so much to offer when it comes to children. And I thank God for them because they are my example. And I just, um, I want to ask their daughter to come forth, um, Hannah.